Hello, this is our third example of how we are using Kendo UI grids on ASP.NET MVC environment. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to get this table here that is uh, basically the table generated by the ASP.NET uh, MVC template and we're going to convert it into a Kendo UI grid. On our previous examples we show you how to do it uh, from an existing HTML table. Then we, we also show you how we're using it over empty divs, but now this is kind of a combination of both. There is some HTML, um, but also it's using a data a source to connect to a JSON source, and it's using templates to generate the actual grid. So. I've uh, taken some steps already because we already covered some of the basics on the other videos. I've added all the references I needed and uh, on my table I gave it an ID and uh, I marked the header with the T head. I marked the body with the T body. Just as a reminder, some uh, interesting things we're doing with the grid just to uh, make sure we cover some of what can be done. Uh, we're color coding the price and the delete actions have a JavaScript bound event that actually hide uh, the row. So in this example our entire row is gonna be a template. So basically uh, we're not gonna use it directly from from uh, our page, what we're gonna do instead, if we're gonna add a tr here and uh, basically just add something that says that we're uh, loading. Let's just put here the number of rows that we have uh, of columns. I mean uh, six, and now we're gonna copy this uh, basically out of here and down here I'm gonna say that it says script I'm gonna give it uh, a name so I can reference it later card template and the type I'm gonna say that is plain text and something so it's not picked up by the browser uh, so it's a Kendo template And here I'm going to copy what I just put in. Uh, obviously inside the JavaScript this is not what I'm going to use. And uh, Kendo UI templates have uh, holders as so. Um, this basically feed the template. So uh, year, this, that, this replace that. And I'm just gonna copy some of the others from from my code so you don't see me typing. But this one is interesting. It has some conditionals and some of the nice things about the Kendo UI templates is that it allows you to put conditionals, uh, JavaScript conditionals. So I could actually just say if data dot price. So it's very similar to what I already have. I just have to make sure to close it. Then uh, I'm just going to copy the same thing. But in here, uh, this is going to be price. So let's continue here. Else, if uh, and it is so similar that I'm just going to copy it from here. And it's not coming from the item, but from the data. And hopefully that gives you an idea of uh, how the template, how flexible the templates are. Alright, so I don't need this anymore uh, and I just need to make sure that I complete the template here.
there's probably more efficient ways to do this. This is just an example though. Uh, and finally, I have the HTML action link. And unfortunately, uh, because it's fed by uh, JavaScript, I cannot use uh, this constructor for the action link. Instead, I'm going to have to uh, copy the actual href. Uh, I still can generate the URL action, and I'm fitting it, and I'm fitting the ID there. But uh, I, it's just uh, I cannot get it from the item ID. So this is basically equivalent to what I had on my racer view. Uh, so now I have the card template, and uh, my grid should be empty. So let's see how I initialize this grid. So I'm going to copy some code here uh, of what we already have on other examples. So basically. Um, the Kendo grid has a data source that has a transport that is get cars. Just as a reminder, I'm going to show you that get cars uh, is basically a JSON feed. Feed, but here is the real interesting thing. I'm going to say here that I have a row template, and this is going to be a Kendo template. And I'm going to give it the selector by ID. And to this object, just get the HTML inside. And that's it. Let's see how the grid looks so far. So this is what we had. And here we are. Um, basic things. Um, are working the color coding is there working um, my the delete action is there we know from the other examples that we need to do the binding at the right time from the delete so let's just make a few uh, changes here real quick the first thing then is let's handle that uh, that about event so the delete link uh, works so let me copy some code and this is exactly what we've done in, in the other two examples. To delete it, you need to get the grid, get the data item, and then remove that data item from the data source. Uh, and then just add some configurations here, like pageable, sortable, oops, sorry. And groupable. All right, let's see our grid. And here we go. Uh, it's sortable. The sorting is not really working though, and it's because we, because we're kind of in this hybrid mode, we need to tell. In the header, we need to tell it what is the data field. So this needs to be year, and the other ones need to be configured as well. Let me just copy and paste that. And now that we've specified the data field here, it should work. So let's go again. And now it's working better. I could drag and drop, and it will do the grouping. So the rest of the configuration should work like in the other examples. In this one, we've seen how to start from a templated MVC list and convert it into the Kendo UI grid by using a data source that comes from a remote server with JSON and also use the Kendo UI templates to to define the data grid. So this is the last of the three videos that I wanted to make about how we are using the Kendo UI grids. We've only covered certain parts of the configurations. There, there are a lot of other things you can do with it, but the the main basic functionality is covered in these three videos. I hope you find it useful, and goodbye.